We're going to kick off the series on data basics with the most simple thing. What's a database? A lot of this channel focuses on the more expert level things, but we're going to start from the ground up to help you build to that expert level. So what exactly is a database? Well, it's the backbone of most applications. Imagine you walk into your favorite local retailer with cashiers and self-checkout lanes. Behind those systems lies something called a transactional database. This database contains transactional data, specifically related to sales. But it doesn't have all the extra goodies like customer information or marketing campaign data. Those are going to be stored in separate databases. You can imagine a company has a lot of different siloed databases that store separate data and don't really talk to each other. So the next step is extracting that data from different sources and moving it into an analytics platform. In this case, the transactional database acts as a source. But as the data finds its way into the analytics platform, the concept of a database pops up again. You're going to have to store that data. Now we have a structure to store information within a data warehouse. So what does a database really mean? At its core, it's just a collection of information or data, and we're not talking about a small pile here. Think millions of records, sometimes even trillions of entries into these databases. Just consider the amount of data Google or Amazon generate. Each record can be compared to something like a single transaction in our point of sales example. Picture ringing up a purchase with all the items, payment method, and date. That entire set is considered a record, or in a database, a row. To help you relate, let's take Excel, for example. You've probably used it to organize a household budget or work-related info. Within a database, each row in an Excel spreadsheet is similar to a row in a database. Now, within these rows, we have columns or fields. These columns group related information together under each attribute. Think name, last name, address, and email. And each record would have a unique email for a specific customer. And remember, databases will have multiple tables. It's like having separate sections within the database to organize information hierarchically. Going back to our retailer example, let's imagine a bookstore. We might have a database dedicated to our book inventory. And inside that database, we could have tables for books, authors, and genres. Each table would contain records relevant to, to each category. Each table will usually have a unique key, which will help identify a record within each table. For instance, in the US, books have a Library of Congress control number that uniquely identifies it. So that would make an excellent key in our book table. When you want to bring data from different tables together, this is called a join, and the keys are important to accomplish these joins. So a database becomes the foundation for organizing information in a way that's not only useful, but also efficient to retrieve. We've only just scratched the surface, but continuing this series, we'll talk about what types of databases they are, what sort of tables there are, what records are in them, and overall, you'll get a better understanding of how we use data in a organizational setting.